It was not that long ago that ChatGPT was the only name you heard when it came to generative AI. If you go to huggingface.co slash models, you're going to see that there's over 300,000 different open source models available for you to use. In this video, I'm going to talk about Text Generation Web UI, which lets you try out large language models in a beautiful web UI and make it look similar to ChatGPT, but using a different open source model in its back end. For example, Meta, which is Facebook, has its own set of 12 models that has been released to the public. We also have Tom, who is the bloke on Hugging Face, providing access to over 700 models that you can use on your local computer. But to try this out on a more practical level, you're going to need a web UI. And this is where Ubabuga's text generation web UI comes in handy. So in this video, I'm going to show how anybody can install this on their local computer and try out any of these models that are released to the public. By the way, if this is your first time to my channel, I want to welcome you. I also recommend you to subscribe to my AI newsletter, which is going to be more execution focused versus just a list of AI news. All right, let's get started. The first thing you need to do is to make sure you have Python installed locally. Now in this GitHub repo, as you see, they have provided one-click installers, but I usually avoid using this because usually they have a set of commands that are expected to work instantly on the first try. But in reality, I prefer to run the different commands in these installers one by one and deal with any issues which come on the way. And I recommend you to do the same. Now, the manual installation does require you to have Conda set up. Now, if you don't know what Conda is, it's an open source package management system. Basically, different softwares might need different versions of different tools. For example, some tools might work best with Python 3.11, but some other tools might work better with some older versions of Python. But if you have a system-wide 3.11 set on your computer, then some tools might not work as expected. So what Conda does is to create a specific environment packaged with a specific version of Python, and then everything will work smoothly within that environment, even though your system might have a different version of Python. Now, to install this on your local computer, first, you need to check that you have the minimum requirements that are needed. I have a pretty old laptop from 2015, and I think I'm still good here. I also have a Mac system, so I'm going to go to the installation section for Mac OS. The first step here is to get the mini Conda installer for Mac OS. And I have an Intel based system and I'm going to use a bash script to install this. So I'm going to get this file right here. Now for all the steps I'm going to do today, I'm going to use the terminal of Visual Studio Code and I have created this folder called testing models for all the future open source models that I'm going to test out. So the first step for me is to move that file that I just downloaded into this folder. I'm going to say MV, which is move and place that installer path right here. So as you see, this was downloaded into my desktop and then I'm going to move that file right here, which is a dot. I'm going to press enter. All right, now I have the installer ready to go. After that, I'm going to run this command, which is just bash on that file. Paste that right here or press enter. It says I have to review the license agreement and press enter. Usually such license agreements are presented to you on the regular installer, but since I'm doing this on my terminal, it's showing that right here. It says, do you accept these terms? I'm going to say yes. Then it's asking me to confirm a location. I'm going to press enter. It says installing base environment. Now, the good thing about installing Conda from your terminal is that you can initialize this right away. And that's why I prefer this bash route of installing. Here it says, do you wish the installer to initialize mini Conda 3 by running Conda in it? I'm going to say yes. Now, after that's done, you have to restart your terminal window to initialize Conda. So I'm going to open up another new terminal. And this time you're going to see these words called base or base environment because Conda is now ready to go. I'm going to go back to that folder that I created before. And as you see, the folder change does not affect your Conda setting. 
Alright, now that the Conda installation is done, we need to create a new Conda environment. Here it's called TextGen, and that will have a specific Python version on which the TextGen web UI works best, and that is Python version 3.10.9. So I'm gonna copy this command right here. So I'm gonna call this TGen and press enter. As you see, it's working on creating a new environment specific to the Python version that I specified. Here it says the following new package packages will be installed and it says proceed yes or no. It already has yes highlighted so I'm going to press enter. It starts downloading all the relevant packages that I need. Alright now I have a brand new environment ready to go. To activate it I have to type conda activate tgen. I'm going to just copy that and paste it right here. And now if you see on the left, it says TGen instead of base. That is the new Conda environment on which we're gonna do all our activities today. The next step here is to install PyTorch. And I have a Mac OS, so I'm gonna use this command. For this, you also need pip3 or pip installed. I already have pip3 installed, so I'm gonna go ahead with this and press enter. And now it's installing these three libraries called Torch, Torch Vision, and Torch Audio. All right, everything seems to have installed successfully. All right, now when that's all done, you might need to do some additional steps if your system is one of these two. The first one is an Apple Silicon. So if you have your system, which is an M1 or an M2, I don't have that, so I don't need to do this. Or if you have an AMD system, you might need to do these additional steps. For example, on Apple Silicon, you need to install Mac OS Ventura 13.3 beta, and you need to install the dev version of Torch because the regular installation seems to have some complications. Now I don't have the system so I'm not going to need to do this. I'm just going to proceed with installing the web UI now. First step here is to clone the repo that I'm on right now. I'm going to type git clone and that repo, press enter. That repo is now ready. I'm going to move to text generation web UI. That's the repo I just cloned. And after that, I'm going to install all the requirements that are necessary to run the text generation web UI. Press enter. And now it's collecting all the necessary libraries that are needed to run that locally. All right, that might take a little bit of time, but now I have all these packages that are needed by the text generation web UI to run locally. The last step here is to just start the web UI. And for that, I need to activate the text gen conda environment, which I am already inside. And I'm also inside the web UI folder, like you saw. All I need to do is to run python server.py. And that is a file inside this. So if I click ls, you're gonna see this file called server.py that I'm gonna run. I'm gonna press enter. You might see this warning called the installer version of bits and bytes was compiled without GPU support. That's because I don't have a GPU and that's okay. All right, this was successful even in my old computer. It says the text generation web UI is running on the local URL. And then they have presented this URL, which I can just click now. And now I have my text generation web UI running locally on my Chrome browser. On the first load, it has presented me with the chat version of the web UI. If you click default, this is where the input and output window is available. And if you click this button on the top called model, this is where you can select a model from this dropdown. Now nothing's showing up on my dropdown because I have actually not installed or linked any model from Hugging Face. I'm actually gonna show that on a different video and keep this video independent on installing Conda and something which uses Conda, that is the text generation web UI. Hopefully you understood how to install Conda locally and have the web UI running on your browser. In a future video soon, I'm gonna show you three different ways that you can get a model from Hugging Face on your local computer and all the different properties of the text generation web UI. That's all I have for you in this video. I hope you got some value from it. And if you did enjoy it, make sure to click like and hit subscribe to my channel. And also make sure to subscribe to my AI newsletter. I have a lot more videos coming up. Till the next video, thank you so much.